Probably the most important part is the lesson setup so that you know exactly what you're going to do when and um, what you're going to teach to each group of children. Um, so before the lesson, probably the night before, um, I would know from the previous lesson um, which groups of children need to um, do which part of the maths lesson. Um, we're going to get started with our maths lesson, so I'll quickly just tell you what each table is doing and then you will know. So this group's working with Mrs Hussein straight away. Um, this group here are going to go straight, straight into your books on the green flip chart there. Alice, if you need to move the flip chart, you can. So the one that's on the board. This group here, you're going to start straight away with missing number problems into your books. I'd like you to check when you've done two questions that the answers are right using the honesty sheet. Okay? And you should lay it out like this. And you know that because you've done that lots before. Okay? And then this group here, math swiz. How many gems do I need you to get? Three. So you're aiming for three gems this lesson. Okay. And then Emerson Yasso, I'd like to get your whiteboard and pens out and I'm going to work with you straight away. Then I will be round. So I didn't, probably didn't say, green group here, when you've done two questions, can you check your answers on the honesty sheet? I'll be with you probably in about five or ten minutes, but keep going as long as you're doing well with the honesty sheet and checking your answers, that's perfect. So, for example, today um, I knew that there was a group who still needed to consolidate um, a three by two multiplication, and there was an, um, they would be my kind of working towards group. Um, and I had a group of children who were really confident with the four by two, um, and they were ready to move on to a missing number problems and then a sort of a, a wider reasoning problem. So, I get all of those ideas from the day before. I've, I've already known that because I've checked their books during the lesson and if I need to have another quick check after the lesson um, and then I'll just sort them into piles and um, get, the, get the resources and the ac activities ready for them for the next day. Um, then in terms of that's where they would be laid out in the room, then in terms of how I would set that up with my TA is that I would communicate to her beforehand and I sometimes give her a little running order of she's going to start with um, group one so for today she was starting with the working towards group but I wanted her to go then next her next step would be to like check on the laptop group and then to check in with the greater depth group and then we had a bit of a who we weren't really sure who would be finished first as to who then might pick up with the SEN group after they'd had the initial input from me. So we left that a bit open. And you might have seen on the video we um, communicated with each other in the lesson who was going to then go and um, work with them. Miss, are you able to leave them or not? Uh, they are ready to move on to their reasoning. Yes. Okay, have a go with that. And then I want you to do that one independent. Yasin's going to have a go at that independent and then he'll check it on the board. Perfect, so they don't need any more. They don't need any more. Perfect. Perfect. So we're good to go. Right, guys. You guys seem to be getting all of these quotes. Okay. I always would make sure there's more than enough work for each group to do. Um, and you'll have seen the flip charts around the room so that they could easily move on to the next step um, for their next skill progression. Um, and they were never really kind of finished for the lesson um, and that work comes from the, the progression of work that's set for the unit um, of work. Uh, so the lesson setup all happens uh, the night before or the morning of the lesson. And it's all related to what the children have done the day before. So I would know from the lesson before and I checked in their books and I know who needs what as their next step. And I would sort those next steps into different groups. So you'll see from the lesson today, there was um, four different groups and they'd all been sorted the night before. Once I know the groups for the lesson setup, it's um, really important for my TA that they know the groups. So the, in the morning when she comes in, I give her a running order of which groups she's going to give input to and at which stage during the lesson. So she knows the, one, the group she's going to start with, so the three by two multiplying group today, that was her main input. Then she knew she had to go and check on the laptop group and then she was going to check with the greater depth group how they were doing. And all the time when she's checking, if there was a problem, she, um, she would pick up with them and give them some further input. Add the two, 56. Six here, five there. Nine times five. Um, a 
Have you completed? Carry on. Carry on for a few more. 45. Plus 5. 50. Okay. So we've got that. How I know the start point of each of the children is in a few different ways. So firstly, um, from our insight system, I can look at their assessments and see um, where it is they're starting from. And then secondly, I found it really helpful to do a mini quiz for the unit the week before. So for multiplication, for example, I would do multiplication questions starting from 12 times 5, just on a slip of paper, through to a multiplication that we saw in the lesson today, so a four by two multiplication problem. And then all the children would have a go at answering that, and then I could mark it, and then that helps me to group them and um, give them the, the start point from that mini quiz. Okay, so Rayan, talk me through what you did first. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and we put our two in the tens, one in the ones. Yeah. Nine. Yep. Seven times two, which is the one. And seven times nine, which is sixty-three. Add the one sixty-four. Okay. So your top line looks correct to me. Is that what you got in your book? Okay. So then we've got to put our placeholder, haven't we? On the next line. Okay. Then keep going for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. That looks good as well. Maybe it's just in your adding up then. So then let's l add that up. We use White Rose as a basis for the unit of work, and that gives a really helpful step by step um, overview of the lessons. So that would be a really good starting point. So for year six, I would use the white rose for year six, uh, for multiplication, for example, for this unit. But then knowing the different start points of the children, I would also go back to year five white rose multiplication and year four, and ensure then that their start point is appropriate for them. And I would look at the year four progressions and make sure that they were the progressions that, for example, my SEN group were working from. Um, and then equally at the other end for my greater depth children, I would be looking at the progressions for multiplication for years seven, eight or nine and planning those in for them. So it's every child is almost, well, every group of children has got a different start point and a different end point within the unit. Um, so we have to look both at both ends of that. Well, I'm glad you're thinking that we've got to find the missing numbers. Some of you think that we've got to find this one first. Some of you disagree. Now, I would, I would also say, and I like that someone was thinking that they've got to start here, because that's where we start with these kind of problems, isn't it? We always start with the ones column multiplied by the ones number. Okay. Now, Lily's jumped and said, actually, she thinks it must be 18. What clues did she have to mean that must be 18? So, th well, there's big clues, isn't there? <laughs> Tallulah. So 6 times 3 is 18. Now, this is a trick, quite not a trick question, they've tricked you a little bit because actually, when we know that it's 18, what do we have to do with the 10? We've got to carry it and regroup it, so that would be here. If I'm the only adult in the room, there's a few things that I would do to still be able to do HQRT but to make it a little bit easier for myself. Um, so, for example, this group that were here that did have a TA, um, I would probably give them a task that I knew that they had done yesterday as a bit of a starter and a recap. Um, plenty of questions that they could do for the first five minutes and then I could come over and work with them. Um, and that would be the same for whatever group it is that needs to just almost wait a little bit longer. Still a really helpful but holding task. Um, and then I would also um, potentially only have three groups that day and merge one group um, when, where that wasn't necessary. Right, year six, um, well done. You've done really well this afternoon. So can you make sure that your books are in a neat pile on their tables? The honesty sheets are back in the baskets if you've got them and all your pencils and things are away. Okay, if you had something to glue in, that can be glued into your book as well.